What is going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast. This is Josh Wilson, and today I've got a treat for everybody. <laughs> I got my homeboy from 2013, and we're going to talk about this. We'll get into this a little bit, but um, you know, a single decision can change your life in a massive way, and a single decision that changed my life and my family's life in a huge way. I owe two opportunities from this guy sitting in the studio today. So uh, let me introduce you to a great friend of mine, a mentor of mine, someone that um, I value tremendously, uh, Nick White, the owner and founder of Off Leash Canine Training. Welcome to the studio, brother. Thanks for having me, Josh. Always a pleasure. Yeah, man, it's good. So Nick is one of my closest friends. This is funny, guys. And um, legit, one of my closest friends I talk to nonstop. <laughs> Seven days a via week. Via text. Yeah dozens of times a day we see each other probably once a year if we're lucky <laughs> at this point yeah. um you know and but it's always a good time and it's literally as if we've been hanging out nonstop yeah. and um just kind of fun so again again welcome nick uh hit us up just tell us a little little about you family you know the business what's up how's everybody hey what's up guys nick white off leash canine training um, I am the owner and founder of Off Leash Canine, 143 locations, about 580 trainers now throughout the U.S. So crazy. Uh, kind of throughout the world because of London. So now yeah. I have to say world. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so I started Off Leash, a little background on me. I'm a former U.S. Marine, former United States Secret Service. And when I was in the Secret Service, that's where I really kind of started getting into dogs, learning about dogs, stuff like that. And what's funny is, you know, now it's the largest dog training business in the country um, and one of the most well-known and celebrity clients and the list goes on and on. But, you know, I, I kind of joke with people that I wasn't this like entrepreneur mastermind when I started. Um, I, a funny story, very few people have heard. I was in the Secret Service. I had a 2010 Nissan Titan at the time. Nice. And my uh, truck payment was like $432 a month. I still remember it, 423 or 432, one of those. And I started really getting into dogs, learning a lot from a lot of uh, really good people. And I started it kind of as a side hustle. Okay. So, uh, but the, the problem is, and the, for those that don't know, the Secret Service is a very demanding, very high paced, long hours, a lot no of way. travel jobs. Secret service. Uh, yeah. Uh Weird. so we're 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 working a lot. <laughs> um so I would I was on midnights at the White House and I would get off my midnight shift, which was about six AM. Then I would drive to a park because at this time again it was just a small side hustle. Right. And do lessons. So usually my first lesson would start at like seven, seven thirty in the morning. And so I would drive to this park change in my Nissan Titan into now my like t-shirt shorts out of my secret service attire, knock out a few lessons, get home at noon, shower, sleep, wake up at 6 PM. And then literally just repeated that. And my goal, I was like, all right. Cause then I was charging literally like $25 per lesson. Yeah, sure. Um, and I was like, okay, if I can get enough clients to pay my $432 truck payment. Yeah. Then like I have a free truck off this like side hustle that I enjoy doing. And it went from that side hustle to pay my $432 truck payment to where it is now. So yeah. And now you could probably cover like a $500 note. <laughs> you go full five in and exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I can get the Tesla cyber truck when it comes there out. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the long story short on the background of kind of where I came from to off leash and uh, for those that don't know, since then I was the host of America's Top Dog on A and E. I've you know been on a, a lot of things, a lot of different news media. Yeah, um, I did training for a lot of celebrity clients at this point, everywhere from Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, John Cena, you know Max Scherzer, UFC champion John Jones, and. Uh, literally the list keeps going um, crazy the logan paul and so yeah that's kind of a, a little bit of background and when i first opened my facility in woodbridge virginia uh, about two years in i just got that facility right before josh here kind of looked at getting his dog trained um, i didn't realize that yeah i only had it i mean because you've you came in 2013. Yeah, 2013. Yeah, early so, 2013. and I started the business in mid 2010. Yeah. So I just got that facility probably a year or so before nice. uh, 
this young man by the name Josh Wilson calls me. That's again, when it was very small, it was me and one other trainer really at this time. So I was taking all calls at this point. And he said, Hey, you know, I I like your training. I like your videos, but I live in Virginia beach. Uh, You know, it's like a four hour drive from your facility. Um, I have this dog, I'm looking at getting her trained. And uh, I'm like, man, this guy's crazy. He's willing to drive like seven hours round trip one hour to do a one hour private dog training lesson with me. Um, and again, keep in mind guys, like, and now that I'm like someone special now, but that like, I was literally kind of like nobody at that point. Like I was unheard of, like in the world of dog training really. So now it would make more sense. Um, since I've built this, you know, a lot of people in the community know who I am, but then like no one. So I'm like, man, this guy's willing to drive seven hours round trip to do one hour private lesson with me. Is this guy insane? Um, so yeah. And so Josh showed up, knocked out his, private lessons every week for what, eight weeks? Was it eight? Yeah, we did four in a row and, you know, we were doing pretty well, Charlotte and mm-hmm. I, and Logan, who's sitting in the studio <laughs> today, hanging out, he came up with us on a couple of lessons. Um, and then we took a gap. I spread out the advanced classes like every two or three weeks. Help Just mitigate to, that drive yeah, time. Yeah, that trip. You, you, know? got the, you got the foundation, which y- yeah, carries we you set. through. Yeah. I didn't want to get rid of this dog anymore. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is legit. This is working great. And so we spread it out a little bit. So it was probably, we did the lessons all together over the course of about three and a half, four months. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was legit. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, Josh did a, uh, unbiasedly, uh, did a, did a really good job with his dog. And, you know, I could tell he's put in the work and stuff and, you know, just one time he's like, man, you should open, you know, one of these down in Virginia beach, you would kill it down here. And I'm like, Oh, you think so? He's like, yeah. And we started talking and now eight years later, yeah, we're wrapping up year seven, going into year eight, January will be eight and he's killing it. So it's crazy. <laughs> it all worked out for everyone. It's crazy. All and look and Devin, I mean, she was not happy about the drive or about the like, training, just the money, uh, the time. And, but I mean, I give my wife a lot of credit, a lot of credit. She's (laughs) solid as can be, but she knows that it's something to me, like, just feels like, ah, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I feel like this is what we're supposed to do. Something inside tells you. yeah. Like she does have a lot of trust with me with that. And I didn't envision any of this. Oh, never. I mean, who would? Yeah, nobody. Yeah, It's ridiculous, (laughs) but you got to pay attention because sometimes, you know, the universe is trying to direct you. You know, the oh, universe, course. God, whatever you you choose to believe in, if anything, there are bigger forces than ourselves. And if you, there's opportunities. Everybody Everywhere. has opportunities. Everyone. And people act or they don't. Correct. And so, you know, we we did. We made a decision. We talked about it for a while mm-hmm. before we did it. I was like, man, I'm really loving what I'm doing. You had a good job. This is, you yeah. know, I make good money. I mean, this is a thing. And. We talk about this often. I when we decided to do off leash, we thought, and when I told Nick, I said, "Yeah, I'd, I'd probably train a dog or two a month, make a couple bucks, maybe do a nice <laughs> yeah." Josh was like, trip yeah, with the I can, kids. "Yeah, I can, I can afford Disney once a year." Maybe. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's literally yeah. probably an example. It, it was my equivalent of my Nissan. Like right. I can pay off this small bill. Yeah, you know? that's what I could do, yeah. and it blow off some steam. I really enjoy working with the dogs, <laughs> and you know, and Devin though when we started talking about doing it as a business. Cause she knew my background, like he doesn't half-ass anything, (laughs) you know, we'll see what happens, but it's just crazy to see what you have built and continue to build based off that decision. And the the motivating factor back in 2010, Mm -hmm. when you started was not this. Oh, not at all. And it's not where this is going to be 10, 15 years from now, but it was a, a simple decision. I was doing what I loved. Yep. And if I can pay a truck payment along the way, so be it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, oh, I have talent with this, skill sets with this. Not only can I teach the dogs, I can probably teach other teach people. Teach the people. And so at what point, Nick, did um did you start to realize like were your friends starting to notice like what you were doing and, and making you were getting a little busier, maybe making some money? Like what was that stage that that got to where you were either hiring a trainer or you were creating opportunities for friends who weren't necessarily in Northern Virginia Correct. to have that first or that second location, I guess. Yeah. So, so before we get into that, one thing I, I always 
like to tell people and use this as a kind of a teaching slash talking moment is for everyone listening, when uh, before we fast forward to, to that point, I had to make the decision first to quit the U.S. Secret Service right, yeah. because the business I did have now, Josh Wilson, the Joe Zitzelberger, and uh, and I had to make a decision like, okay, and I wasn't doing that well this time. Keep in mind, I was right. just doing what I loved, you know, and but as I said, the Secret Service, a, a, a very harsh schedule. So I was burning both ends very strongly. I was doing dogs for five, six hours a day. And then I was right. doing Secret Service eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And I got to the point where I was like, okay, I have to make a decision. I can't keep doing this. Not good for my health, not good for my sleep, not good really for anything. Right. And I decided obviously to quit the Secret Service, which I was a 20... 9, 20, 28, 27 year old, uh, you know, making $110,000 a year government salary, full government benefits. Yeah. I was eight years into a government retirement, four years Marines, four years Secret Service. And the, the teaching moment that I want to talk to everyone about now that everyone's kind of caught up is there's not a single person in my life at that time, not my mom, my dad, my brother, no best friend, not yeah. a single person in my entire life that supported that decision. Not one. Yep. Everyone said, you're stupid. You're making a horrible decision. You're quitting a $110,000 year federal government job that it took you a year and a half to get. Most people, I mean, the Secret Service is 3,000 people in the world. Right, Most yeah. people never get it. Um, and they're like, and you're giving all of that up to train dogs at an elementary school playground? <laughs> yeah. Like, are you insane? Um, so the so what I so the point to take away from that is don't listen to people. You know, yeah. if you feel good about it and you're passionate about it and you feel like that's your thing, don't listen to what other people say. And I, I genu genuinely feel that mo a lot of people in life aren't successful because they listen to other people and take 100%. the advice of other people. Yeah, you got you're exactly right because so many people, everybody is that that comfortable part. Correct. Right. It, it's comfortable. Yep. You thought I was crazy. To come to Northern Virginia, six seven hours <laughs> to and do a one hour longer. lesson. Yeah. Logan, how long do we sit in the car that day driving back? I mean, we had to come down through you Northern know, Virginia the traffic shore yeah. <laughs> because we, it took us eight hours to get home. I think that one yeah. day, and it, people don't do that. That's crazy. That's inconvenient. Yeah. That is that is uncomfortable. And everyone it, says literally that's crazy. That's crazy. Yep. Everyone. And when I say there's not a single person in my life that yeah. supported my decision, literally, my mom, they actually did the opposite. They're like, you need to think this through. Right. You're not thinking a lot. Like, and not out of malice. No, just out of fear. fear. Yeah, fear for me, essentially. Because it's fear for themselves. It's like you've done so well at this point in right. your life. You've got a great government job, and you're about to throw away your life right. to pursue yep. this crazy pipe dream that you have in your head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not out of bad intention, but unfortunately for most people, it does create a yeah. bad thing in their life. Because how how there's a lot of people in the world right now that listen to those people. Sure, uh, most I would I would argue most people listen Absolutely. to those people. And one thing I've always been firm on, and I wish everyone would be, is you need to believe in yourself even when other people don't believe in you. Absolutely, because there's going to be a lot of those moments. And there's going to continue to be in my life and your yep. life and everyone's life where maybe I do something even crazier, you know, 10 years from now. And there's going to be all those people saying, you've done all this in your life and you're right. about to throw. Um, but so, yeah, that's that's the big takeaway for everyone is, you know, duh, is you got to believe in yourself even when others don't. Yeah. And, you know, now a lot of those people in the Secret Service who's like, you're crazy, you're stupid. Like, I've, I heard it all are literally some of my employees now. So, yeah. um, so yeah, that, that's the big thing to, that I, that I wanted to get out of the way first is, you know, believe in yourself and don't, don't listen to the opinions. Well, of what others. were we talking about earlier in the van? We were talking about, you know, people get focused on, oh, we were talking about a, a another dog training business, mm -hmm. something unfortunate that happened yep. and people were coming to me asking for comments and stuff. I'm like, I don't have a comment. It, it doesn't affect me. It's a sad situation. Um, but I don't know the details. Yeah, I'm not on yourself. Involved. I focused on my team, yep. my business, my family, and to make those tough decisions, like you have to have blinders on and earmuffs, everything at the same time. You got to be laser Especially with the internet. Oh, and social yeah. media. You got to be laser focused, <laughs> you know, on what your intentions are, what your mission is, and you got to drown Stay out the all course. that noise because it's not going to be easy if it's different. Yeah. 
you know, and everybody, some people, yeah, will come at you out of malice. Correct. But the people that matter and that will hurt you the most, if you're that person with a, an entrepreneurial idea um, or that drive, you want to, you want to, you know, your family's full of doctors and you're like, man, I'm going to go park you, ranger yeah. I, or I'm going to be a lawyer. Family of doctors don't want a lawyer in the family. Correct. You know, you're supposed to be yeah. a doctor. They're wondering what the hell you're doing. You've got to be built a certain way to work through all that. Oh, very, it's a very stuff. mentally tough. You have to create mental toughness, I would say. Yeah. For to sure. drown out the the naysayers and the negativity. Um that to me, I think that's what a lot of it is, is mental toughness and not start believing. Other how many times disbelief. in those first 12 to 18 months were you like, shit, my mom was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? the the good thing is for me, and again, I think you can go either way with it. Uh, you know, once you reach that fork in the road where everyone tells you you're an idiot you can go one way or another. Some people say, oh man, they were right. I should have listened to them. Or for me, it wasn't revenge, but it was almost like, I'm going to prove to 100%, you. Yep. Like now I'm, I was super motivated before, yeah. but now I'm really motivated because yeah. I know that you don't believe in me. So I'm going to prove you wrong now. Right. Um, and clearly at this point, I think everyone agrees I've done that. So. You're, hey, you're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, two Christmases ago, I bought my mom a house. So That's dope, uh, for, so for a Christmas present. That. Yeah. So she has slightly more belief in me at this point. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and again, as you said it, like I have great parents and, you know, great family. So it wasn't out of like mal. It was, right. just, it was concern. Yeah. It was like, Hey, we, you are not being logical. You are being crazy, which when you, when you, if you dig deep, when you think about it, you kind of are. You know, it's like, wait, am I going to quit a hundred thousand dollar job to train dogs at a park? Yeah. You know, when I took 18 months to get this job, I'm halfway into a government retirement. So when you actually look at it from a very factual pro con perspective, yeah, it foolish. does not add up. <laughs> yeah. So, so I get it. Yeah, but foolish. when you add in the pro of getting to meet John Cena, got to take <laughs> that's right, Jonathan. I mean, and th but it is, it's so funny. And that's where like, when we, we talk about a lot on this show you know, you've got to keep that focus on why you're doing what you're doing. And because it, when you're, what do we talk about all the time, Jonathan, those little steps, those little wins, mm -hmm. those little building blocks, right? It doesn't have to be a home run out the gate, but you get enough singles. You know in how you get row. a, I say how you get a first down is get, two yeah. to three yards That's at right. a time. And That's you it. just got to keep yeah. chipping away and you can't, the noise is just a distraction. Yep. You know, everything's a distraction. And it's whether, and the people, unfortunately, that will be the biggest naysayers yep. are the people closest to you. Uh, generally, yeah. And, Almost always, actually. You know, because like, who gives a crap if some random person Yeah, you're says like, whatever. Like, I don't even, I literally, yeah, you're a stranger. Literally don't yeah. know who you are. Correct. You know, but when that friend, and we had one when Or I the was, person you trust. And, right. You know, when I was leaving the church, uh, one of my best friends. Bro, don't do it. And we were, we were, I was running both for two years at yeah. that point. I was burning up 95 coming to DC. I mean, it was crazy. I'm falling asleep on the highway. I'm stopping at <laughs> some random hotel in Richmond, you know, sleeping for two hours, getting back to the house and going to work and, you know, just crazy stuff. And when I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go all in on this. Huh? <laughs> what? Why? But it's, it's like, if you know, you know, but you also know. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to know I, I left nothing to yeah, chance. Though. I tried it. I tried all I could. Yeah, there was and, nothing to chance. And unfortunately, uh, I, I think most people go through life without taking that chance. They go through life mm -hmm. playing it safe. They take that safe job at the factory, yeah. that even though they're a phenomenal artist or a phenomenal graphic right. designer or a great dog trainer or whatever, yeah. whatever their, their thing is that they love. But unfortunately, most people... And again, I think it's because they listen to those people. Yeah. They go through life playing it safe. Oh, I got a good job. I got good benefits. I got you know, the parking space out front of the office. Yeah. Like, um, and yeah, that if if I could like talk to everyone in the world, that would be one of the things I would talk about. Is you know, what, as you said, worst case scenario, sure. you try to pursue that art. You try to pursue, and you give it your all. It doesn't work out. All right, cool. You go back to the that factory job that job as a vet tech right that, that it's always going to be there for people you. are afraid of the risk this is the thing that i started thinking about it this way i don't know exactly when but i i think it's key people always focus on the risk of doing something but they never think about the cost of not oh it's it's very true yeah and it's like okay this is scary but what is the cost of me not doing Correct. it 
Like if I didn't try, because if I tried, at least now it, you know, and it hit. Yeah. When? Wow. Where would we? Where would we be? Like where would you be? You know, right. you'd be in the same where, spot. And that's and you know if I if I keep going if I avoid that risk, I still have risk. Oh, I still course. have risk of the business I'm working at mm-hmm. going under. Yeah. They could lay me off for any given reason. They could you know do whatever. They're in complete control. But what did I give? up what was that cost because i didn't pursue that passion that art Correct. Or what it, i mean think about all the people we know that like when i grew up some of the best best athletes didn't play the sport oh, of course yeah and they would have been yeah. freaking Could've incredible been phenomenal but they didn't have the discipline they were unwilling to take that next mm-hmm. step it's like well i don't want to risk this but the cost it was absurd you know, there's a, there's a really good motivational speaker that I like a lot named Les Brown. I know you're oh, familiar yeah, yeah. with him. And one of the things along those same lines he talks about, and I really liked his perspective as he said, you know, he had speaking to thousands of people and he says, what's the richest place on earth? Like, where do you think the richest place with the most money did it on people raise their hand? They're like, ah, oh, Fort Knox, you know, bank of America, the world right. bank, the I, you know, all of this. And he's like, all oh, those are really good, but they're all wrong. The richest place in the world is the graveyards. That's where every invention, every idea, every business yep. that every person's had inside of them that they never pursued that business. They had a great idea or invention in their head yeah. and they had, here's how it works, to, but they never did anything with it. And that all of those died with those people. And he's like, really think about it. If you could add up all of the business ideas, inventions and innovations that were in people's heads, who's died to this day, yeah. it would be trillions and trillions right. and trillions of dollars worth so he's like the richest place in the world is graveyards where all the ideas been businesses and inventions died with the owner yeah. that never pursued them yeah and i'm like that that's it's pretty it's a pretty harsh reality well and we think about all this like people we would say special have made like huge impacts on the world you know the tech just on the technology side so you think about bill gates steve jobs tesla think about tesla uh, yeah. and elon, elon musk, musk and stuff right it's like the special part to me isn't what they brought the special part to me is the dynamic in which like the mentality that they were willing to do. Oh, it's crazy. They were willing to like eat shit sandwiches for like years and years and years and years and years and just go all in on this concept. Yeah. When they had the same thing, oh, I've, they had well, people telling them, are you kidding me right now? What, what are you doing? I, I recently saw those of you that watch shark tank, which I feel like almost everyone's familiar with it in America at this point. Uh, Mr. Wonderful, who yeah. I love, in Shark Tank, uh, I saw on his Instagram a while back, he said, someone asked, it was like, ask me anything. Yeah. And someone said, if Elon Musk, like 15 years ago, walked into Shark Tank with his idea, here's the Tesla, here's how it works, da, 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 would you have invested? He said, hell no. I would have told him it's too crazy. <laughs> And right. So you have, and, and you got to think about that. Like you have like a billionaire saying, Hey, Josh Wilson, your idea is dumb. It's stupid. It's never going to work. Like you really got to be mentally tough for sure to overcome. And that. where is it at today? What were we talking about? 896. Uh, yeah. It's like 900 a share making Elon Musk worth over $200 million. The richest man to a, a ever. A year ago yeah. it split. Yep. And it was down at like, so it's technically double and that. It's doubled Correct. Since then. Insane. So yeah, that, and that's where I said, I think it takes a lot of mental toughness and a lot of belief in yourself yeah, to do sure. anything great, whether it's basketball. I mean, no matter what field you are, you know, the, like Michael Jordan, you know, he got cut from his seventh grade basketball team because he wasn't good enough. Right. Imagine how many kids do the same and just accept that. Never and give play up. again. They, how many Michael Jordans are out there? They got cut from the teams. The coach said, Hey, you suck. Yeah. And that, th- that ended it the, where they could have been yep. the next Michael Jordan, the next LeBron James. So there's so many examples that, um, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, yeah. if you read his book, you know, he spent time in Italy at, and this was way before Starbucks, keep in mind, where cafes were like a popular thing in yeah. Italy. People sat outside, read the newspaper, sit, and he's like, wow, that's really cool. Like people meet social gatherings. And he's like, oh, wonder, I bet that would work really well in the US. Cause again, that was before right. any of that happened. So he, and he worked at a coffee shop in Washington that sold coffee makers and coffee beans. And so you could just buy it. So he approached his boss said, hey, I saw this in Italy. What if we sold? the coffee by the cup so people can buy our call. And he's like, ah, well, who's going to pay $4 for a cup of coffee. They can buy our bag for $6 and make, you know, 80 cups, you know? 
And he's Everybody. like, oh, yeah, he's like, oh, I think it'll work. <laughs> so Howard Schultz in his book says, how many investors, because he wrote up a business plan, like sure. a legit one. Uh, how many investors, he says, do you think I went to before the guy said, I believe in this, I'm going to give you the money to essentially start what we know as Starbucks? Like, what would you guess? I'd say easily like two, 300 people he had to go what to. What did you say? Yeah, I was going to say 150 to 200. I think it was people. 450 investors. <laughs> the yeah. four, It was like the yeah. 448th investor it was like, said, I, I believe in this, here's the money. And he talks about like, imagine if I'd have accepted it at no at the first right. or the 10th or the 50th or the hundred or the 300th or the 417. Like, and that's belief in yourself. Like, for sure. Because keep in mind, when you're going to investors, that's AKA people smarter and richer than you. Uh huh. And uh, Every 400 <laughs> smarter, richer people is saying, that is a horrible idea, Josh Wilson. And he just kept plugging. And he just kept plugging. And he's now he's a billionaire. He's super th thick skin or he's an or idiot. He's got no sense yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think about developing that mental toughness now? Because like with the Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, they weren't necessarily operating their business with social media where everybody's oh, just yeah. posting mm -hmm. their wins. And yep. that kind of standard is set real, real high. How do you think that that translates to developing mental toughness today with social media? Yeah. So social media is an interesting thing for me. Um, I honestly don't spend much time. Like I don't have a personal Facebook page. Uh, I have a professional Nick White official Instagram page where I post like dog stuff, stuff I'm doing here, but I don't have like any personal thing. And if you look, so you can see, I'm not lying. If you look at my followers, I follow, follow like a thousand people and it's things I'm interested in jujitsu, MMA, but most are like success, motivation based pages. So now when I log into social media, I'm only really seeing things I'm interested in UFC, jujitsu and motivation, success, um, people that's out there killing it, like, you know, Elon Musk's and people like that. So I'm not seeing like a lot of the bull crap the negative of social yeah. media that most people are seeing. Um, so I try to, like Josh said earlier, I try to drown all of that out. So everything that I see is positive, is motivating, is here's how you become a winner. Here's how you become successful. And we just talked about this yesterday. There's, I told him one of my favorite quotes uh, to create mental toughness. And I try to do this myself is they say, if you want to become more mentally tough, create a habit out of doing things you don't want to do. And create a habit out of doing it. And I do literally, I do petty things to do that. Um, for example, I'll be sitting on my couch and, you know, I'll go to throw away something. I'm like, oh, the trash is full. You know, everyone's done that. And you're like, no, I'll, I'll get that tomorrow morning or I'll let so and so get right. where well, as soon as I get that, literally, I'll be like, just take it out. Like you're mm -hmm. trying to get out of this simple, basic task. Right. So over, go ahead and take it out. Like, don't hit the snooze button. Just wake up. So it's just like small things every day. Because you'll never create mental toughness by taking the easy paths, For you sure. know? So it's like create a habit out of doing things you don't want to do. It's like, all right, I don't want to run today. I'm going to run. Um, so I, I think that and then for you and then again i think for the social media aspects i think that hurts a lot of people uh kids especially i think a lot of women because you see perfect instagram tens right and now women and kids and 14 15 year old girls they're filling their timelines with that so that becomes the standard they're like well i'm not that pretty i'm not that skinny i'm not my butt doesn't look like that right yeah and they and it gives them you know issues identity issues I feel like and you're health explaining issues. logan's instagram feed right now I don't, <laughs> nah, he's, he's explaining mine too don't call him out he's, he's got me too but it, it just sets a false reality because what you don't realize is that you're you know the normal person in this normal town and you're comparing your body yourself to that girl that has a professional photographer with a professional editor right who's skin touched photoshopped you know i'm great at photoshop He'll, he'll tell you like I can shrink your stomach line in. I can yeah. boom, do your job. I can literally make you look like a model, even if you're the most average looking person. Literally in ten minutes. That transform tools, beautiful. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it is. It's true. So that's that's the problem with social media is it sets a, an unrealistic standard in a lot of areas. Yep. That's the the look way. And then of course, as we all know, everyone on social media who's in a relationship is in the best relationship ever. Of course, with right. no issues and they're happier and they're in love and oh my god, Josh Will. Wilson's the greatest thing to ever happen to me. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, like she's getting punched and the cops called on her. Right. And, yeah. You know, not just for the record, not actually Josh Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> We've been like three years. <laughs> 
But so, so I think if people were going to utilize social media, the correct approach is, and not saying that this is the correct approach, because what I do, I just think there's a lot of merit to it. Like try to make your feed based around the, oh, that's a, I'll write this one down. Make your, your feed, your followers based around the person you want to become. Yeah. So, yep. it, it, and that's pretty much um, consciously, I never thought about like that until yeah. now, but that's what I do is I'm following the billionaires, the millionaires, the motivators, the motivational, the David Goggins, the, the Jockos, the, the motivate, the Les Browns, the people who's just pushing out positivity, motivation, you can do it, success. Yeah. Um, here stock, top stock picks from this expert, like things that I pretty much want to conform my life around. I'm not following all the fake pettiness and the negativity and all yeah. of the like i try to keep that out sprinkle in that dog trainer instagram and you know you, you wrap up the whole tight following on that thousand people so, <laughs> exactly follow you know us. but the thing to, to that point and it's so good and it's so true so i've talked to you about my coaching group apex mm -hmm. and you know it gets referenced often on the show and um i joined that march of 2020 and over the last 18 months my social media feed instagram and Facebook has transitioned completely. You know, it's not that I don't care about my friends, kids and stuff like that. that. That's all great, but I'm not on there. Like Facebook, particularly if I'm on Facebook, it's typically around the business pages, Correct. Instagram. I spend more time on, but when I open up Facebook, all I see is winning. Yeah. All I exactly. see is winning because yep. that's the only stuff I engage Winners with. Win. If I see bullshit, I unfollow. Yep. And you know, I made Drama, that a conscious unfollow, like, unfollow yep. political, unless it's hysterical to me, unfollow. Talking shit on my comments, block. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're just, I'm not responding. Block yeah. lead. We had somebody message um, one of my salespeople about, hey, need help with my dog. I want to ride my Mastiff around and it can only carry me for a couple seconds. This person's <laughs> being dead serious. I'm like, delete, block and yeah. ban. Like, this isn't going to go anywhere. And so, you know, just eliminate anything that's fringe like that. And we discount how much impact oh, it's huge. a scroll yeah. can have. Cause if all you're seeing is BS or fake things, yeah. which is you're, almost you're everything. creating this altered reality that you're trying to compete with yep. that is, isn't reality and now subconsciously you don't even realize it but you're wondering why not me correct and, why not me and, and the problem with social media too even myself knowing it and you know i i in a way uh, not purposefully just the nature of um, i post like once a week on my instagram but just based off the nature of it you know i literally will get messages that says like oh man like you have a great life you're just always traveling hanging with celebrities like Man, like you have the, I'm like, yeah, well, you're not seeing the other 21 hours of my day, <laughs> right. you know, you're seeing the highlight reel. Yep, you're sure. seeing, you know, that literally everyone's highlight reel social media. No one, no one is very few people are posting their right. reality on like their relationship. How many people's like, oh, I had, you know, me and Josh had an argument again tonight that lasted till 1A, but anyone in a long-term relationship knows that that's a reality that for reality. everyone, but no one posts about it. You yeah. know, no one says, oh, I'm a drunk alcoholic again tonight, but you know, there's a lot of them out there. Yep. So that's the problem with social media and there, and it's a literal statistic that people who spend more time on social media suffer from higher rates of depression. Yeah, for that's sure. a literal factual, undisputable uh, statistic from, I think it was the American Medical Association or the Health Journal. Yeah, that's what that, forced Instagram to get rid of the like count. Exactly. Because they used yep. to have it. And mm -hmm. then they were like, okay, this is severely detrimental yep. to people, especially young girls. So we got to get rid of the like count. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, because why am I, why, why is my picture not, what do I, yeah, am I not change cute about me? enough? Maybe like I should have added more awesome. of a filter. That's great. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, the practical steps I think people can take out of your, out of your question, Jonathan, is, is one, like be intentional about, Follow people what you you're want following, to be like. you know, because like, what are you uh, who's who's where you want to be or beyond? Correct. Right. That's that's who you should kind of follow after who's putting out, you know, positive things where it's not just a flex. It's literally trying to benefit Correct. the community, the world, whatever humanity itself, like fill your your mind with that. I think that builds that's a mental hack. Mm -hmm. And I think the other part, too, is you know, where you said, hey, I'm going to do something that I don't want to do because I'm building this discipline. But also in doing that, you're going to fail and you're going to fail at things that don't crush you. Yeah, correct. And then you'll do it again and you will succeed. succeed. And now it's like, hey, my skin's a little thicker. My yeah. confidence is a little higher. And you go because now conversation we were having earlier today about a situation had it happened five years ago. 
I'd have been probably had a heart Weeks attack. Ruined. Yeah. I'd, have, I'd have been done. Correct. Weekend's but, gone. But now it's no, because I've taken these lumps yep. and it didn't kill us. Correct. You know, and but it, but it doesn't because of what we built. built. Correct. And over now time. I know by doing the right things consistently over time. And that's a big piece too. consistency. Correct. Is everything, you know, it, you're consistent. You learn how to deal with the failures. The, you learn how to deal with the stressors that pop up and the surprises. That, there's a, a great thing I always like to look at on consistency. As I said, you know, I'll tell people when they talk about one of the most important things, success. And I always say consistency and that's anything is you can't name a single person that's like a great athlete because he had one great game right. or one great yeah. year. You know what I mean? It's they're very consistent over like the Michael Jordans, right. the Tiger Woods, the LeBron yeah. James, the Kobe Bryant. Like they're consistently great players. They didn't have one great year and then they right. sucked for the next 11 and they went down as legends, yeah. you know? So consistency is the key. So funny when tell someone you hear somebody say an NFL player is trash. Uh, I'm of like, course, I'm yeah. terrible. I'm like, look, he may not be as good as the other 80 people yeah. at this position in the league, but trash. Yeah. Like, yeah. Trash. This guy's elite. He's the 1%. Still, I, I recommend all of our viewers go on YouTube and look up Brian Scalabrini versus trash talker. He was formerly known as the white Mamba. Okay. So red yeah, yeah, hair yeah. played for the Celtics, the yep. Bulls, a bunch of different teams. A uh, guy at a gym was trash talking him, saying, oh, you're garbage. You're garbage. You can't play. Oh, it's the white mom, but he can't play. Beat him. They played to 11, beat him 11 to nothing. Oh, well, for his, sure. With his right? weak hand. Yeah, literally. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm into UFC, and people are like, oh, that guy shouldn't even be in UFC. He sucks. And I'm like, he literally would kill you. Right. <laughs> exactly. Very without, quickly. Without breaking yeah, his sweat. Literally. Very quickly. It doesn't have to be a set arena. It can be any place at any moment. You're deceased. But again, like, again, that that's a great example of the positivity versus negativity. Right. You see, like, that person sucks. Where I see he's not a top tier in UFC, but he's still great. Like, right. I, cho I choose to focus on the positive versus saying, oh, yeah, you're right. He sucks yeah. compared to these guys. And that's what a lot of this is, too, in my opinion, of success is I'd say a lot of it's very mental. Um, I've never met, like, a mentally weak negative person ever right. who was highly successful and there's a really good book called the power of the subconscious mind and what they talk about and i found this very interesting because then i started thinking of people and i'm like oh like it adds up is they said you know there's a lot of negative people out there who's like oh you're gonna fail you suck whatever and he said notice none of those people are doing great themselves right and and it's a literal science that's why it's called the power of the subconscious mind is if you're that person who's always negative you're always down you're always you suck you suck your business sucks then what you've done is you're associating success with negativity you're like screw elon musk he's right. just one of those billionaires so you're creating a subconscious wiring in your brain that says highly successful equals a piece of crap who sucks so now you're subconsciously gonna prevent yourself from taking mm -hmm. the necessary steps to create that for yourself yeah because you've subconsciously associated successful person right. equals they suck that they're crappy and he's With like everything yeah and what you need to do which is what i do and what you do is the opposite i'm like hey you're killing it you're richer and more successful than me let's be best friends right when are you free let's hang out let's do dinner let me pick your brain and now you're rewiring to create I want to be like that. So now, and and we've talked about this before because these people are out there, trust me, I know personally, um, that person is like, oh, screw Nick White. He built this big empire. He thinks he's all that. Celebrities. Do. So now they, they, I distance myself from them. Meanwhile, the Josh Wilson or some other trainers like, hey, this guy's onto something. Let's be best friends. Let me learn from you. How right. can, and now they're killing it for themselves two years later. So it's like you, you just never, ever get anywhere in life with that mentality, that attitude or that negative, you know, name one negative low self-confidence, you know, person that is killing it in right. life. And you can't. And the thing is, because the ones who are, <laughs> it, it's so funny you, you, you mentioned that, like the people that will distance themselves because as off leash has grown, that has become, I mean, that's just, it's, it's, it's like a target Correct. and it doesn't matter that how well it's doing. And I'm not talking about how well it's doing uh, financially Correct. and, and numerical growth, but like you can't, you cannot separate the success of the business, number of trainers, number of locations, uh, financial, you can't disconnect that from 
the quality of the dogs and the product itself. Like Correct. they are connected. Correct. And, you know, I would say for me, I always talk about as our team has grown from me in the garage to 60 <laughs> plus trainers now across locations and stuff. I hope I pray every day that I'm the worst trainer on my team. Yeah. I want to be the worst dog trainer yeah. in my organization. My ego does not need me to be Correct. the best. Yeah. Because clients were so happy with the experience I gave them, which I learned from you mm -hmm. directly, the model that you put in place. Obviously, globally, Correct. this works well, yeah. the system, the and, system works. and the experience. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. But if I can continue to teach people and develop people or bring in naturally better dog handlers, but teach them how we do things and the client experience, and I'm the out of a hundred trainers within my personal organization here, I'm number 100 and it's not even close. Yeah. I sleep just so when, yeah, like what, but so many people can't get beyond that. Yeah. And that's one thing that's hysterical about the dog community is how quick everybody's just got to be against. Yeah. But the people who are in there that collaborate and do discuss and bounce things off each other, be like, Hey man, I see you're doing these things. And it can, I've seen you do this. Oh, yeah. There are other company owners. They're building their brand. They're doing stuff. Like, can we talk? You have those meetings. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. I have I've those, done a lot. I have those meetings. I coach and mentor. Yeah. I'm not worried about the fact that they train dogs also. Correct. Are you telling me that dogs are going to have a better life yeah. because I was able to share some knowledge? Correct. That's a win. Yeah. And it's not it, putting you out of business. Right. Yeah. Because the end result of people leading well and being generous with their time resources finances whatever it may be never equates to a failure or a loss no, for that individual that, there's a, a good quote uh i don't think he invented it but you know one of my good friends who's not an off leash but is in the dog world bob salamini yeah he's a really good friend of mine in phoenix and one quote he always says about like people like that is he says people forget that blowing out your candle or blowing out your candle won't make mine shine brighter. Right. So we can both have lit candles. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And both kill it and both, and people forget that very easily. It's like, it's not me against you or me against the other trainer in Virginia beach. It's like, we can both kill it, you yeah. know, and yeah. people forget that. And, and I, the crazy thing is the market will decide. Correct. Yeah. Like Let if, the market decide. If, if yeah. your, if, if your product, your results, your reputation, your experience, and mine is lacking and yours is so much, mm -hmm. but it's not about me against you and you against me. Yeah. Clients will decide. Yeah, it's let, too easy to decide. find and yeah. do and research. It's very measurable. So, you got a question, yeah. Jonathan? I know. I was going to say that goes back to belief in yourself, too. Like we talked about earlier, if you believe in yourself and what you're trying to do you're and not know scared. that you can get it done, you're not scared yeah. about yeah. what other people Correct. are doing. You're willing to give that knowledge because you're like, hey, let's all win. I know what yeah. I'm doing. I'm confident in myself. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point, too. It's like I'm confident in myself that I don't need to be like me, 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 me. Right. And as Josh will tell you, you know, like. Uh, you know, I train for all of these celebrities and put out, you know, some of the best dogs, best videos in the world of dog training. And what I do and just did recently is I constantly put out videos to our trainers saying, Hey guys, here's how I do those videos. Yep. Here's the small tips and tricks I do to make those heels tighter here. Like here's yeah. everything I can think of that I do to make you just as good or ideally better than me. Yeah. Where there's a lot of people, not just in dog training, just in general, who's like, Oh, I have all these great secrets and hacks, but I'm keeping that because I don't want you to be as good as me. And I just hate that mentality. It's like, why can't three people be great? You know, verse one is great and two is mediocre. Well, and that's a really cool point too, because one thing about, nobody outside of off leash i think would know this so i'm going to spill the beans and you can fuss at me later if you don't like it but you know it i have a interesting situation where i'm directly connected with you and, mm -hmm. and it's bit built beyond a professional Correct. relationship over the years and uh, but what i th i think is so important people should know but that they don't is how much effort and time that you put into the development of the business. But what happens first is the development of our people. Correct. Which in turn develops the business. Correct. And it's not, yeah, we're the largest dog training business in the country. In the country, yeah. It, that's not a debate. That's not an opinion. <laughs> like it's, it's a literal just, fact. It's yeah. a fact. But it's not everybody with a bunch of locations or you and you're like, oh, this is just happening. 
Oh, um, you know, I'm just chilling. You it know, goes back this, to my Instagram as people don't see the right. They're like, man, your life's great. You travel the world constantly grinding yeah. and looking at how can we improve the experience Correct. and the experience for the dog, the trainer, and it transitions the, to yeah. the owners yeah. and the, the experience for the trainers. And it's nonstop. And that has never changed. Well, off leash has changed tremendously right. since I came on in yeah. 20, we opened 2014. So I started training as a trainer learning to be a trainer in 2013 it's night and day difference yeah the growth much. is incredible the number of people the systems the processes but that same consistent piece consistent piece is the effort and the development into not being content yeah and what it's funny you mentioned that um is joe who's you know one of the Awfully, the manager of Awfully JC. Asian, uh, Joe Zitzelberger, is, he said, like, he's like, I always tell people, he's like, one of the things I respect most about you is even though you've made it in the dog world more than 99% sure. of trainers have, uh, you still work and hustle just as hard now, yep, if right. not harder than you did nine years ago when yeah. you were trying to make it. And I think that's what gets a lot of people too, is they get comfortable. Yep. They get that hundred thousand dollar a year job and they're like i'm i'm set for life at this point where it's like well you could make 150 you could make right. 200 you, you could own this company you could own this company and then fran you know it's like that's how my mind works but unfor and it's not unfortunate i guess it's just each their own some people yeah. just have no desire well, that's to, what society you know? teaches you from the get-go get it's a safe like, job go to school get a safe get that job, job. Yep. you know then you say you're gonna go to school get dental you gotta get good grades <laughs> get that dental get your 401k yeah. can you get a match oh if you just make six figures, you're successful. You're set. Set for and I'm life. sorry. I know plenty of people that make multiple commas who are miserable pricks. Yeah. And I know a ton of people that make thirty to forty thousand dollars a year that I envy their happiness. Correct. And there's something that they have internally that I gotta find. Like I'm not an unhappy person by any yeah. means. I'm I'm happy. But man, I'm like, damn. And it's not content, it's not lazy, it's not settling. The life they have chosen, that's, the life yeah. they designed, that's truly what you that wanted. is their perfect life. And, and one of the things I always say that's incredible. is, you know, who's, who's more successful, the high level millionaire who's stressed out every day and business meetings and management and just hates life or the stay at home mom who loves being with her kids and going to their soccer games right. and watch it, seeing them off to like, which one's more successful, you know, yeah. who's happy seeing them making breakfast for the kids before school right. and getting them on the bus. And you know, so, yeah, the, the, nobody should measure, you know, success, you know, money equals success. Not Cause that's, bit. yeah, it's very interpretive. I know, I know two people, people who have had a lot and also have had nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It's a choice though. Correct dinner last night we we're talking about how we're the generation of our families that's going to shift it that can shift it yeah you know i'm driving home the other day and this i think how the conversation started i i was i, I started thinking about my mom and i actually got a little emotional <laughs> like driving i'm by myself just listening to music and it just popped into my mind i'm like oh my gosh like this is where we're at this is what we're building not what we've built. Correct. This is what we're building. Work in progress. Right? Always. Yeah, always. Always a work in progress. But I remember my mom taking us to school, and we couldn't touch the ceiling of the car because there was no headliner. And if you touched it, it would <laughs> literally third-degree burn on your fingers. Of that, you the know? heat. <laughs> you know? And so. And now Logan can touch the shit out of the headliner. Logan just, no, he can't. <laughs> Mess up that suede, son. You better not touch it. So, <laughs> get them get greasy the finger fingerprints. Off of it. Yeah. But, but I'm serious. So, like, that's such... What did we talk about? We talked about the honor in that. Yeah. Like the honor to have the opportunity to cause that shift. Yeah. To where like our children, our children's children have opportunities Unlimited. that we didn't necessarily Correct. have. We created. We did. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't have created it if my mom didn't do her part with Correct. me. Correct. If my grandmother didn't do her, her part, part with, with me. Yeah. You know, and with they created my mom, it in a different way. They built that mental, mental strength. Correct. Mentally, right? they created And that it. investment in me, whereas my family didn't have the financial means to invest heavily and right. do a startup for me yeah. and things like that. We lived in a trailer in the desert. Yeah. They like, weren't like, hey, let's put 10 grand a month in our Vanguard account. No, you know? there was none <laughs> of like, that. Like, we don't even make so, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was none of that. But what there was, though, Josh, you can do whatever. Yeah. Josh, you were, you were strong. You were smart. Yeah. 
What are you into? Good, you, it gave you good fundamental yeah, foundations. You're going to do big things. You yeah. could, you can do big things. Yeah. And so you just, that part is so important. And a lot of people don't have that to they their credit. Not, you know? yeah. they to their not. credit, a lot of people have the opposite. They have a shitty 100%. upbringing with horrible parents and yep. bad parenting. And then it takes a lot of, and I don't discount that. I used to, no. I'll be honest. I used to be like anyone, you know, you just, no. you know, just got to suck it up and do it. But then as you get older and wiser, you yep. realize like everyone didn't have that loving, caring, and nurturing. Not. You can do it. Nick White upbringing. Yep. They had the opposite where it's like, oh, you're a piece of crap. We wish you didn't have you. Dad's out drinking all night. And then and, you got to be wired to have that chip where you're going to go fucking do it. Yeah, anyway. And that, that's where the revenge kicks in. <laughs> right. You know, that's that's where the the second road. Has I to always kick say in. I was just too dumb to, to realize they were just feeding into me. And I'm like, oh, I believe it. I was dumb enough <laughs> to believe it. And so I take stupid chances on things you know, and the, make foolish there's decisions. two quotes that i love you know <laughs> the one i said earlier is you know you got to believe in yourself even when nobody yeah. else does but sometimes but i think more rarely but i have seen this too to speak to that is sometimes you have to believe in someone else's belief in you oh for sure even if yeah. you don't believe in yourself but i'm yeah, like dude good. you can do this Try, like I don't think I can, but if Nick thinks I can, I, I believe him and I'll give it a shot. Yep. So I've seen that too, is believe. And I've done that in off leash. People's like, dude, yep. I don't know. I'm not cut out for this. I don't know. And I'm like, trust me, you can do it. I'll help you. And you know, now they make over a million dollars a year. Well, I'll tell you straight <laughs> up, like, and this ain't kissing your ass. I feel like at this point I don't need to do that. But, um, you know, you've been tremendously encouraging. Like I, I, I had the drive and still have the drive, yeah. but there was a lot of fear. Because, you know, I've built business before. We lost everything. Yeah. You know, we hit a reset button. Yep. And while the, the desire was there, I was scared. Oh, I was nervous. You've been you know? through it before. Yeah. And you're like, hey, man, look, like, this is what it is. And you told me straight up, I'll never forget it. You're like, build it as big as you want it to be. Yeah. You want to do a couple dogs a month? Do it. We're in good yeah. shape. Like, it's cool. It's no big deal. You know, you want to have 60 trainers throughout the yeah, U.S.? You know, do, that. do whatever you want to do. You know? <laughs> it's like, hey, Nick, we're thinking about expanding here. What do you think? He's like, well, you tell me what you think. You yeah. got you. Can you handle it? Can you take that on? And, you know, it's really exciting having you here in the studio and and on site to see because you've never been down here to, to our location. Yeah. And so it's it's fun for you to get to meet the team and see what we're building here. Um, that is the catalyst for our organization within your organization. Correct. Yeah. And, um, it's own it's organization just, it's, in itself. It, you know? it, it's it's, it's an organization in an organization. It's, it is. Yeah. It is. And, and that's what to everyone's certain level and ability and what they want. That's how, that's what you've built. And, and that's what I tell people that, you know, like there, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people out there that literally I could be like, Hey, you can have my income a year. You can have everything I have, but yep. you just got to do everything I do. And literally there's countless people who's like, no, I don't want to deal with all the stress right. and all that. So it's like, you got to find what's perfect for you. Yeah. You know, like I'm now in a role where I'm comfortable handling this beast and dealing with it. Uh, but some people's not. And it's like, look, like, you know, like, Hey, I just want my lo one location, two to three trainers, you know, eight, 12 dogs a, a month. And yeah. like, I am good. And they're not wrong. They're know? not like, wrong at all. That's perfect for them. And yep. that's the key is you got to find what's perfect for you. And, you know, it goes back to, as we were talking about earlier, you know, every now and then you, like you reach out to me, I'm like, yeah, do it up. You'll kill it. You'll, but then the problem is some people reach out to those people in their lives that they trust. And they're like, I don't know, you shouldn't do that. Right. Like, ah, oh, you're probably going to fail. I had a buddy who did that same thing two years ago right. and, you know, he lost it all. And you're like, Ooh, so that to me, that's the important of surround. Like literally on social media, on my Instagram, I look like a rock star because I'm right. always traveling celebrities, Logan Paul, like, you know, Ryan Reynolds, like all of this. But as you, Josh knows in reality, I, consistently speak to three people a day. That's yeah, you're, you're one of the more boring people that I yeah. know, honestly. I, you know? Really? Like, no, it's, <laughs> I don't mean that as a knock. No, I respect outside that. Of, out of outside of traveling, I sit at home, innovate, yeah. work on stuff on my own and talk to two or three people. And it's two or three pot, like Josh, Joe, two or yep. th tank, two or three, like positive, upbeat people. Cause I realize, and most people don't the impact that your circle can have yeah, on you. Sure. you know, there's a great quote. And I, I swear if they could scientifically prove this, I would bet a million dollars on it. There's a great quote that I live by that says you are the average of the five people you hang out with mm -hmm. the most. So if you find if you hang out consistently with five crackheads, guess what? You're <laughs> yeah. probably going to become a crackhead. That's right. If you hang out with five 
millionaires and billionaires consistently, guess what? Yep. You're probably going to become number six. You can't so help, I, help but do it. Yeah. I, so I live by that. I'm very, very cautious of like who I keep in my inner circle. And yeah. if you were in my inner circle and now you start becoming negative or, you know, down all the time or like, all right, you're getting booted out. Um, just, and you know, there's, there's a good thing that like, I always like to reference uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, the motivational yep. speaker says, and he says, every year you need to do a friend audit. Mm -hmm. So every year say, all right, I talked to Josh, I talked to Joe, I talked to Tang. I just named my friends I talk to every day, pretty much <laughs> Bob, May, uh, yeah. Cody. So like four or five realistically. Um, but he says every year audit that inner circle and replace your most loser friend with a new winner friend. Yeah. So it's like, man, like this person has been pretty negative and down and always, you know, like, oh, you shouldn't do that all the time. Like, let me replace him with my new friend from Apex Group or whatever, right. who's motivating, who's positive, who's upbeat. And he says, if every year you do that, your life will change within five 100%. years. Replace your most loser negative friend with yeah. a winner friend. And if you do that every year for five years, your life will completely change. And I, 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 a hundred percent. I mean, look at what was my inner circle seven years ago. Oh yeah. The, the literally the same exact mm -hmm. people that it is today. And I have really haven't added anyone. Yep. And so far everyone's made the cut every year when That's I right. do my loser friend audit. I'm like, Oh shit, it's <laughs> January 1st. Yeah. Am I going to get this text or not? But there, there's a <laughs> lot of truth to that because you, when you, when you're trying to push things to a new level, not just in dogs, I'm speaking anything, you're an artist, you're, you're anything, a vet, uh, whatever it is, you, to me, like that inner circle, those people you associate with every day can take you to a new levels higher yeah. or bring you down yep. lower. And I've seen it countless times in my life, both ways. Yeah. Um, so I, I wish more people would really audit like who they kind of associate with the most. Because again, like a great quote I always love, I've shared it a lot, probably shared it with you guys. And I genuinely, this is true, is it says sit with winners the conversations are different. And I, a hundred percent, like when I meet up, you know, with like you or someone like that, what, what, so, you know, I'm not lying. You said it earlier. We were talking about the Tesla stock. I'm like, oh man, do you see Tesla today? Yeah. I'm thinking about buying more. What about you? What are you going to do? Oh, yeah. what about, you know, Vanguard stocks killing it? What's your think? Like, that's the conversations like, Hey, you know, how many more trainers are you going to add out here? Well, what if, we, what were we talking about right before we walked in? Hey, what's our black Friday strategy? Yeah. All right. Let me write that down. I wrote down yep. like, so if you sit with winners, conversations are different. I assure you, if you have five loser people sitting around who's doing drugs, drinking alcohol all day. They're sitting around, you know, in the trailer park. They're literally not like, Hey man, do you see the stocks today? Man, crazy, right? <laughs> right. Well, what, what's your investment strategy going yeah. for? You know, like that, those conversations are not happening with those no. people. Nope. And that's why it's so important to surround yourself with those people. Um, and fortunately years ago, I, I had a, a good mentor who was a client of mine, Roger Modi, yeah. who's the co-owner of the Washington Wizards and Washington Capitals net worth that's Googleable. So I'm yeah. not like telling right. his info, but net worth like $300 million. And, uh, that's one of the first things he told me too. And he's like, you're on a good path, Nick. Cause this is off leash had like five locations right. at this point. He's like, you're on a good path. He's like, but you know, watch who you keep around, surround yourself with. And again, a thing he told me that I love still this day is if you're the smartest or the richest out of all of your friends, yep. you need to find new friends. Yeah, that's a fact. It's like, what are you going to learn from those people? So like, and that's why I said back, some people are haters. I'm the opposite of a hater. I'm like, yeah. oh, you make more than me and you're way smarter than me. Cool. Are you free this weekend? Come to my place. Let's hang. Yeah. And now I'm picking your brain. Um, so yeah, that's why it's important to try to find your, find your, surround yourself just like Instagram. Yeah. People you want to be like, it's easy for me walking in the most rooms. I'm definitely rarely <laughs> the brightest person coming in. So look, we've got, we've actually, Nick's in town. We're hosting a really dope ass seminar the next couple of days. And we have some savages that are going to be showing up here actually shortly. So this is going to be part one of two, because I really do think <laughs> there's a lot of value in you sharing just, you know, with the audience about like, Hey, this is when I kind of started to, to, 
to expand and scale to the next level because a lot of people can start something but they get lost at the scaling part correct and um and that crosses all industries and i would love to get your wisdom and insight to share that so i'm going to get you in here for another 20 30 minutes where you leave town monday morning but i don't want to leave guests waiting and stuff so guys this is part one of two we'll probably run these over a couple weeks (laughs) Uh, Nick, thanks for being in here. Thanks for having me. And we'll get it set up. Jonathan, take us out, baby.